the Retro Network Podcast. Kind of like Home Alone mixed with The Hangover. Pause. Time out. All right, I'm doing the Zach Morris thing. Yes. The flagship show for the Retro Network Podcast channel. We've got some fun stuff in this episode. Man, that's like listening to classic Guns N' Roses. Even G.I. Joe fans are like... WTF. Get ready for the latest pop culture news. We've got plenty of recurrent events headlines to get to. Man, can you imagine getting a service that streamed all these old Nickelodeon shows? Interviews. Let me just start out by asking you, what was your Batman experience when it first came out? Yeah, uh, summer of 89, I was very excited. I was a comic book reader. And topical discussions on all that stuff we grew up with and just can't leave in the past. There's just so many great memories that I have as a kid just begging mom to go to the department store. We were the target audience for Sears catalogs. I remember getting them and mom sitting down at the kitchen table and getting on the telephone and making her orders. How have you not watched The Matrix? When I went to the movies, I was trying to go watch a sensitive movie, the ones where you could put your arm around your date. And now, here are your hosts for the Retro Network Podcast, Jason. I like to have pictures with my words. And Mickey. I ain't farting on no snare drum. Well, hello there, Mr. Big Shot. You got your own podcast last week. How did that go? You talking to me? I'm talking to you. What do you mean? I got my own podcast last week. I've had my own podcast for about four months now. Well, you got to host your own podcast, Mr. Big Shot. Well, I didn't have somebody else I could pawn that part of the show off on to. So, yeah, I had to do it myself last week. Yeah. So, how do you feel? Do you want to start doing the notes yourself then and and, and let me sit back and... uh, and, and drink my Appalachian cough syrup and, and whatever if, I want to. I'm fine with putting the notes together. Like a, if you listened last week, it's pretty simple. I'll just put a line on there. It says, talk about old stuff. I'm good to go. We, <laughs> we can see how that whatever. goes. Yeah, man. Talk about whatever pops <laughs> up. Hey, it was a great show. I enjoyed putting that together and I was laughing through the whole thing. You guys put some fun little <laughs> elements in there. Tony doing his little impression of me and. Yeah. My trapper keeper, that was great. My personal favorite, the people did not get to hear that I, I recorded a little something special just for Jason for when he was editing. He would come across it, and I'm sure he was like, "Wait, what is it? What, what, is, what is he doing? <laughs> what uh, what affiliate site did you sign up for? <laughs> How are we getting this sponsorship on it? You'll hear it this week because I'm planning to release a a new outtakes and stories podcast, so you'll get to hear that part. I'll throw it in there. Oh, and hey, uh, before we get too far into this, speaking yep. of old stuff, he'll never, ever hear this, but I want to say happy birthday to my old man. He's 73 years old today. Oh, wow. And uh, he uh, done a lot through the years, made a lot of different times special with doing different things like Christmas and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's what uh, festered my love of all old stuff and nostalgia is bringing back those old memories of things he done. So happy birthday, Pops. Cheers to him. Very good. Cheers to him. Let me stir my drink. Yep. Mm. Yeah, this is a party. Hey, <sighs> and Jason here back on the podcast, and we're doing our what we're calling our Halloween party this week. So all of the uh, the drinking and all that stuff that you normally hear just in the outtakes, we're going to do while we roll the show this week. It's going to be a party, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Oh, yes. That's, that's a... Uh, I've been addicted to this stuff. A pumpkin spice tonic. Ice cold. Mm. Pumpkin spice tonic. Like tonic water? Uh, No, it's like a... I liken it to like a pumpkin cream soda. Uh, Okay. Oh my gosh, it's good. It is very good. It's like uh, drinking a, a pumpkin pie, man. No, I well, no, you're right. That's probably way more like drinking a pumpkin pie than what I had earlier. I was telling you about <laughs> some some home. Uh, oh, I don't. Should I incriminate myself? I don't know. Some homebrew pumpkin pie moonshine here in the Appalachian Mountains. It don't really taste like pumpkin pie. It looks like it, <laughs> but it, it just looks like, like it. okay. Yeah, it I don't taste you. like it. <laughs> so there's no special pumpkin ingredients. You're just trying to get that uh, color. No. No, there, there is, it has notes of pumpkin, but okay. it's, if you baked a pumpkin pie at the highest degree you could and instantly put a piece in your mouth, that burn you get, you know, that it's the same to be said for all moonshine, but you get that slight, uh, pumpkin pie aftertaste. I gotcha. Well, fun, man. Party on. Cheers to you. 
But I had uh, so much of it yesterday getting ready to record this today. Now I'm down to some, what is this? Uh, some apple crown and nice. Yeah, apple crown and nice. There you uh, go. That's the party favor of choice today. Very good. <sighs> good stuff. Yeah, I've got some a little snackage here too, man. I don't do much gummy stuff anymore, but when I see the Happy Cola gummies, that's the Coke flavored, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love those. I had some uh, candy cigarettes laid out for my snack during this, but I traded them for a Nintendo cartridge. So, (laughs) (laughs) Very good. I got some Pop Rocks, too, so maybe I'll uh, I'll have some fun with that while we're recording. I was going to say that'll make for some interesting audio. Maybe I should dump that in the pumpkin spice tonic and see what happens there. Yeah, I don't I don't know so much about that one. <laughs> Try to explode my head, you know, like Mikey back in the day. Remember that urban legend when he like Mikey the kid from the life cereal commercials that drank like Pepsi and ate pop rocks and his head exploded or something? You mean urban legend that didn't happen? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I, I can't prove or disprove it. No, uh, I, I think it's been disproven. I seen a photo of him. Actually, it's funny. You bring him up. I saw a photo of him the other day, uh, really? eating a bowl of life cereal. Yeah. So he had recreated something for an Instagram or whatever as an adult. Nice. And I thought, Hey, it's that guy. <laughs> that guy. Yep. Yeah. That guy from the, the commercials. Cool, man. Yeah. I've got my, uh, I don't know if I'm going to eat these or not. Cause I have nothing to spit them in, but we tried the zombie Skittles. Thanks to you. Uh, we put that, we put a little video together. I, I put it over there on Patreon this week. Uh, so our, our people can see it over there and I don't uh, get too, <laughs> too crazy with the public, but oh my gosh, it's pretty I, that, nasty. it is. I've never licked an ashtray, but that's what I would imagine it would taste like. Wow. It's just nasty. Very nasty. And my oldest in the video, he's just sitting there seeing how much he can stand. <laughs> I was like, as soon as I tasted it, it was out. And yeah. he was just kind of. <laughs> well, wow. he, he is at age where he's too cool for school. You know, right. he's, I can handle anything. <laughs> but with age comes wisdom. And before long, he'll be wise enough to know, you know what? If it tastes bad, spit it out. You ain't proven nothing by keeping eating it. Exactly, man. Exactly. I was just, I couldn't believe he was doing that. I was just get rid of it, man. <laughs> it is an interesting concept for the candy, though, for Halloween. Yeah. You know, as a one off thing. Eh. And, yeah. But besides the zombie flavor, what did you think of the, the Halloween flavors, though? I thought they oh, were it all was, great. Oh, yeah. They were awesome. And that's why I was kind of in the middle because now that I can't identify the zombie flavor, I want to eat more, but I don't want to <laughs> eat the zombie. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, I, I, maybe I'll try another pack, but uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to hand them out at Halloween. Yeah, that's even better. Just give them yeah. to kids. They aren't uh, going to know a thing, man. That would be great if they didn't. They were oblivious and they just started popping and be like, oh, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little trick and a treat mm-hmm. for Halloween. Yeah. Well, we've got a great show, man. We've got uh, a lot of Halloween content. Uh, love this time of year. And we're going to try out our review uh, format, what we're trying to maybe do over there on Patreon coming up. But we're going to have the Paul Lind Halloween special as our uh, initial one. We're going to see how this goes today. And uh, man, well, it's, a, it's a slight, <laughs> a slight trial of it because this Paul Lind Halloween special is only 55 minutes long. It don't, you know, it's not as much to dig into as we'll have in movies in the future. But uh, I think we'll have some fun with it, though. It will be fun. Uh, And just a couple announcements before we get everything started. Like I said, we're going to do a new Outtakes and Stories podcast this week over there on Patreon. And we've actually decided to go ahead and release the very first episode of that over there on Patreon. So it's open to the public. You don't have to sign up or anything as far as uh, as one of our uh, pay levels. But we just want to encourage everybody to go over there and sign into Patreon. You can grab that. There's a special RSS feed link in that right-hand column. You just pop that into your favorite podcast app, and then you get our Patreon feed. And we've got that first episode released for everybody, so you can go ahead and and do that. And then as we get down the road, we'll probably 
leave the the current episodes, you know, kind of behind the paywall. It's only two bucks, people. Come on. Yeah. You can afford two bucks and uh, hear all of our craziness. But we did want to give everybody a taste. So if you're not ready to do that yet, go over there and uh, and sign up and you can listen to it for free right now. And and check out all of our crazy outtakes and drink sipping and <laughs> cursing. And I'll uh, <laughs> chime in like I did last week that we're putting a lot of other written content over there too. And not all of it is patron exclusive. We're putting some stuff over there free for everybody just to... You know, come on over and stop by and see what all we got going on there and check out a bunch of the free stuff, too. Some stuff hopefully you'll enjoy. Right. Keep that kind of moving forward. And then, uh, yeah, on the time machine, we're going to go back and, and take a look at the Paul Lind Halloween special this week, sponsored by Retro Days. And we'll talk about them uh, a little bit. Uh, but first, and I'm going to just pause for a minute, our regular recurrent events. I'm actually going to put on the website this week. We're going to try a, a new little article kind of format for the recurrent events. And maybe I'll make this a weekly thing because, like Mick said, my notes are insane. And I don't put half the stuff that I get from my uh, my RSS feed of you know stories across the web into our recurrent events. So maybe that'll be a, a place I can just dump all that news each week. And if you guys are curious about... You know, it's mainly retro-minded stuff, but we have fun with the food and, and some other things, too, to kind of keep it current. But go check that out on the website. I'm going to drop that. It, well, by the time you're listening to this, it'll be up there, and you can see what we're going to do, and we're going to link back to all the stories and such. But for this episode, since it's our Halloween party, clink, we're going to do a special Halloween edition of the Recurrent Events. All right, our special Halloween recurrent events is sponsored by HalloweenCostumes.com. We are in the home stretch, people, to Halloween. As you're listening to this on our normal Tuesday release, we've only got nine more days left. So make sure you take advantage of our exclusive TRN promo link. Save 15% through October 31st. And, of course, it includes those glorious, ugly Halloween sweaters. Mick wore one out yesterday and got tons of comments at the uh, the pumpkin festival there. We've been talking about these for a while now. Man, they're glorious. Go out and get you one 15% off if you use our promo link, which will be in the show notes. Yesterday morning, I was texting you and telling you that we were going to the pumpkin patch, and, and I'd asked Jason what did he think the over-under was on questions or comments about the ugly Halloween sweater. And we <laughs> set the number between us, what, four and a half? Yeah. Over under four and a half. It ended up coming in at, over. yeah, we both said over. It ended up coming in at nine, nine comments or questions That's on this ugly it. Halloween sweater. And uh, several people were actually actively wanting to know where they could get one. And I was handing them out a tiny URL link to go <laughs> say 15%. There you go, man. Yeah. Portable savings. Mm -hmm. You know, you got instead of having analog. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Mickey is his own app, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I am. Five <laughs> stars. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get into this. We're going to go into some articles we found across the web on several different topics. We're going to start with costumes. And this is something I found in my uh, stories this week. The 2019 most popular costumes by state. And we talked about the what was the most popular Halloween candy for each state. So I thought this would be fun to take a look at, Mick. Uh, anything popped out at you as far as, well, I'm just, what was now, your state? I'm just now going down through it here. I'm trying to get to Virginia. Oh, I like the looks of that costume. <laughs> uh, man, this is a long list. Virginia. Number one. Well, these are the top five costumes would be it, uh, which, that's number two. That's crazy. Dinosaur, Spider-Man, and Descendants. I'm guessing Descendants would be Disney's Descendants? Yeah, yeah Disney's Descendants. Are we sure this is from this year? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what they're saying. Oh. Mine was uh, for Alabama, which 1980s. That's probably yeah. because I'm living here. Yeah, uh, it, Descendants, and Dinosaur. Was number five. So I'm looking at Utah. This one's pretty cool. You know, Utah, a Mormon state. 
uh, a devil makes their top five list. <laughs> That's interesting. I saw that uh, there's only two states. I was looking to see because. 1980s was second in Alabama, and there was two states it was number one, Mississippi and Delaware. Okay, so I guess those people need to, I don't know, New, get out of the New, house or something. <laughs> New Hampshire has an interesting list. They have dinosaur and descendants, but the middle three are a fox, a pirate, and a pig. That just seems kind of random. I don't know. Wow. Mississippi, number one, 1980s. Number yep. two, superhero. None in particular, just just a superhero. So oh, uh, Delaware, their number three is Beetlejuice. Hmm. The District of Columbia, Scooby Doo is number one. Wow. And then a tiger, then a skeleton, and then Spider Man, and then Mermaid. Huh. Okay. Kansas, number one is Knight Rider. They must still be stuck in 1986. Say what? I'm kidding. That was a joke. <laughs> you had me scrolling. <laughs> I've done, done some work out there one time, and uh, I had a guy with me, a really naive kid. And he's like, man, this place is flat. And da, da, da. I'm like, yeah, these people are kind of backwards out here. You know, <laughs> They're behind the times. He's like, how's that? I said, well, they only got color like 15 years ago. He said, what? <laughs> he said, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, like you've seen black and white TV. He's like, yes. Well, they just got color. He said, they just got color TV. I said, no, everything here was black and white until about 15 years ago. They got color. And he's looking at me like, are you serious? <laughs> like, Absolutely. <laughs> wow. Uh, Rabbit made the Connecticut list. I'm thinking maybe that pink bunny outfit that, you know, Ralphie had or something. Yeah, I'm thinking this list is probably not very good, actually. I mean, just for the fact, like, I mean, it and Spider Man, that's that's pretty, um, that's pretty on point the last year or so. But the rest of this stuff, like dinosaur, like every state, it's one of the most five most popular costumes. How many kids do you see dressed up as dinosaurs where you're at? Uh, not many. Usually there's one, like, adult in that T Rex one, you know, that's kind of like blow up. Yeah. <laughs> I see those, like, every. Halloween now. Yeah, but for that to show up, I mean, this is almost every single state. Dinosaur somewhere in its top five. I just don't buy that. Number one for California is Chucky. Huh. Okay. Mm. And I uh, see Fortnite in some place, like South Dakota. Like, those people even have internet to even be able to play Fortnite. What are they thinking? <laughs> Apparently, uh, pirates are pretty popular in Alaska. Vermont has Peppa Pig. <laughs> <laughs> Idaho, Mermaid, and then Cowgirl. Well, I tell you what, I think the state we need to move to is Wyoming. Okay. Wait, what'd you say about cowgirl? <laughs> that was uh, Idaho. Mermaid oh. first, then cowgirl. Oh, I'd like to go to some of their parties then. Uh, Wyoming seems to have the most retrocentric list that I've seen on here. Number one is the Mad Hatter. Uh, okay. Number two is Joker. Number three is 1980s. Number four is Chucky. And number five is Power Rangers. I think we would fit oh, in wow. more there than anywhere. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Well, that uh, list we found on Distractify, supposedly it came from, I think, Google, the actual results or something. But anyway, we'll put a link up to that in the show notes. Um, you found some 80s costume ideas. Mm -hmm. And I also posted some as a part of our uh, sponsorship over there on rediscover the eighties for this year. Um, was there some that maybe stood out to you as far as if I'm going to go as 1980s, it's going to be this costume. Uh, no, I just thought it was an interesting list to see what the general public thinks of when they think of eighties. And, you know, it's got all the common stuff on here. Mm -hmm. It's got Ferris Bueller. It's got Madonna, but it's got a few uh, misfires like saved by the bell. Yeah, that would be more of a 90s costume. Probably, yeah. Prince, uh, Baywatch, which is always gets a vote of approval from me when, well, not from when everybody's wearing it. You have to be, you know, you have to fit the suit. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, see too many people dressed up in the uh, the Baywatch uh, swimsuit. This one's kind of weird, though. Whitney Houston. How many people are dressing as Whitney Houston for Halloween? Uh, I don't get that. Yeah. Uh, salt and pepper, uh, 
some of these are a little too on point, you know? Yeah. Uh, let's see. NWA, Rainbow Bright, Cindy Lauper. That's always a popular costume. Uh, Elton John. That's not too hard. Just go buy some <laughs> crazy funky colored stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then this one, Princess Diana and Prince Charles. Really? We're dressing as Charles and Di? I didn't. Yeah, that might be a two. Well, let me throw in a, a few that are actual costumes that I found on HalloweenCostumes.com. They've got the full, like, Princess Bride. So you got, like, Princess Buttercup there. And then, what's his name? <laughs> my name is Nihiro Montoya. You killed my father. Yeah, They've got him. Prepare and to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've got uh, several of those characters. They've got uh, several Ghostbusters costumes, depending on which era you want to go as. You can just do the classic. You can do Ghostbusters 2 that are like the gray suits. And then they've got the girl Ghostbusters suits over there. Plenty of uh, different choices for those. Ghostbusters 2 is actually new for them this year. They got the Breakfast Club. So you got uh, Bender and you got Claire. You can go as that. That's that'd be a pretty good couple uh, mm-hmm. costume. They've got the uh, the Michael Jackson Thriller like werewolf mask and the jacket. I thought that looked great. And then you <laughs> just get a pair of jeans on, you're good to go. That looked pretty fun. Yeah, Ferris Bueller. They've got him and Sloan. That would be a good couple's costume. And Inspector Gadget. They got a uh, like the trench coat. You could almost pull this off yourself and just glue some. You know, like extendable hands off the top of your hat. Yeah, I'm not allowed to wear trench coats in public anymore. <laughs> I'm well, not going to ask why. I mean, whether you can or not, I don't really know, but that's just what the judge said. <laughs> and then we also found some like clever, what you might call punny costumes over there on Buzzfeed. You found yeah, this one. I sent you this one just for number seven, pretty much serial killers. You know, like cereal that you eat killers. And it's a group photo where there's zombie versions of Captain Crunch, the Trix Rabbit, Lucky, Sugar Bear, and the Honey Nut Bee. I thought (laughs) if I had a group of friends, uh, Mm -hmm. that that would be something. I mean, that's just a pretty cool costume, I thought. And the one uh... below it, the Pumpkin Spice Girl. She looks like (laughs) Baby Spice from the Spice Girls, but she's wearing a Starbucks logo around her neck. She's Pumpkin Spice Girl. I thought that was pretty cool. (laughs) Yeah, these are a little over the top. Beyonce. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? There's just some crazy ones in here. Uh, American Gothic. Yeah, you know, you got the frame, and then you got the the farmer and his wife, but they're dressed in goth. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I, I like, like that number one. nineteen too. French kiss. It's a couple Frenchmen, but with kiss face paint on. <laughs> 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 well, that was a good costume. <laughs> That was pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, Wonder Bread Woman. No. She's got the Wonder Bread uh, sleeves <laughs> from yeah. like the the bread uh, <laughs> the bread package. <laughs> oh, my gosh. A little crazy there. Yeah. But, yeah, there's always some people, though, that you'll find. I'll, I'll be scrolling through Facebook and be like, yes, that's just great. They come up with something like that that's clever. All right, well, uh, you want to move on? Let's get on to some horror movie stuff here. We've got uh, over there on Cheat Sheet pulled up some horror movies that you can stream and, and where to find them, I guess, throughout the rest of the year. Probably most of you listening to this, and if you're into horror movies, you've already watched about a dozen by now. Because <laughs> I know a lot of people start that countdown right at the beginning of the month, and uh, our buddy Adam did that. He's watching like one a night. Now, some people never stop. It's a year-round thing. That's true. Well, this list that came from Cheat Sheet, some of we've already talked about before, Amityville Horror. It's over there on Hulu. The Scream franchise. Have you watched all those? I had not until two weeks ago. I'd seen that they were on Netflix, and I thought, no, oh, this likes scary horror movies. And this, it's Scream. It's kind of modern. It's... Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I like the original. It's the only one I'd seen. So we watched it and she loved it. Yeah. And she asked about watching the second one and I had time. I'm like, okay. Uh, she ended up, I fell asleep. She ended up watching all four of them. Wow. And uh, 
she was starting last weekend to watch Scream the series. I guess that may have came on MTV or something in later years, but really, yeah, she really liked the uh, the Scream movies. She she really enjoyed them. I've seen the first two, and that was kind of at by force. <laughs> <laughs> had uh, some friends over and they, I remember that being like a rental, the first scream. And then, uh, I think I was home from college when scream two came out and we made a night of it and watched that. But, uh, if you want to get back into that, that's over on Netflix night of the living dead. I haven't seen that one. That's the, you've uh, not watched that one. No. Again, if I, if I start talking about horror movies, I'm just a total poser because I don't watch a lot of horror movies. Well, I don't either, but Night of the Living Dead is, it is a horror movie, but it's also uh, like a genre changing film. I just figured maybe you would have seen it on that point. But the sad thing with Night of the Living Dead is you can watch it on here. It's listed as Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. You can watch Night of the Living Dead anywhere because no one ever renewed its rights. It's actually in the public domain now. Anybody's free to do anything with it. Yeah. So, and it's a good horror movie, especially if you have a, I'm not going to say really younger kids, but people like my daughter's age who may be like, I'm, I want to try a horror movie or something. This one is, it's got some scary in it, but it's not like super gory or anything. It's mm-hmm. a nice middle ground movie to take people. It's a fun little watch. It's got a it really out. interesting twist ending too. So. Oh, cool. I like it when that happens. Okay. Uh, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2. Have not seen that. That's over on Hulu. I have seen parts of Evil Dead when it was on like cable. Uh, what's his name? Bruce. What, who's Bruce this? Campbell. Bruce Campbell, and his boomstick. Mm-hmm. Have not watched that in in years. I know I've never seen the second one. And hey, so. if you're a fan of Bruce Campbell and Ash, you can head over to minifiguresmarket.com and get your own <laughs> Ash minifigure. <laughs> uh, the original Carrie. That's on Netflix. Have not seen that. There's the original Friday the 13th. I have watched that one. That's on Amazon Prime. I might have seen the second one. I can't remember, but I have, I know I've seen the original. I like my personal favorites were the ones that the hardcore fans did not care much for. I liked them when they got a little farther up in the series, like Jason takes Manhattan. I thought it was cool uh-huh. seeing him roaming the city streets in New York city. And, uh, the, what's that other one? Uh, Jason's dead, the final Friday or whatever. They do one in space. Oh yeah. Jason X or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen that. (laughs) But Uh, there's plenty of movies on here for people who want to, I mean, they they list a lot of the major ones. Child's play is listed where you can watch Mm -hmm. it. Invasion of the body snatchers. I got a lot on here. Yeah. We'll get a list up there, but uh, you know, pretty much at this time of year, I think people are already looking for horror movies on, the streaming services and most of them uh, will definitely have them available around this time. And AMC fear fest, you put a link here to their schedule and that's just kind of a marathon of horror movies. They do on AMC, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just the, we were talking about the countdown type stuff. They make it real easy. Just every day in October, they're showing movies. This is kind of like the 25 days of Christmas that ABC family used to do, but it's AMC Mm -hmm. Halloween. And it's a, this link just shows you the full lineup every day, what they're showing and what times, which is really weird. Just at a, this coming Tuesday at 9.15 a.m., it's from dusk till dawn 3. 11.15 is from dusk till dawn 2. And at 1.15 is from dusk till dawn. Now, why would <laughs> they be showing those in reverse order? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, well, hold on. Maybe, maybe uh, that's how the story kind of goes, maybe. Uh, I've seen the original from dusk till dawn. I absolutely loved it. I've not seen two or three. Maybe they take place before the original. Maybe they're kind of showing them in a chronological order. So, yeah, it's fun. They're not showing. They're not all just like what you would call probably straight up Halloween horror flicks and slashers and stuff. They've got like Alien versus Predator on here. Spawn. Mm-hmm. I saw Jaws earlier in the month there. So Cujo, they're showing it. Jurassic Park, they're showing. Yeah. And I guess, you know, Fear Fest, they're just kind of playing off of scary stuff uh, and suspense more or less than just. And it looks like coming right up up. in the final days coming up to Halloween, they're showing all of the Friday the 13th movies. 
and all like the Halloween row, movies rolling right into all the Halloween movies, yep. which it looks like they keep repeating all the Halloween movies on loop for about two days. Yeah. And two even, Halloween. uh, even into the November 1st, that morning, mm -hmm. keeping those rolling. That's pretty cool. Okay. And then, uh, over there on Nidorama, they've got the 100 best horror movies list. What do you think about this? They think they, they got them right. Uh, well, you know, you and I've talked, I, I don't know a whole lot about a lot of horror movies, but from the ones you've seen, what would you say is your favorite? Um, I don't know. Probably something like Friday the 13th or, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily say good or bad because like you said, I haven't watched enough to know which ones are good or which ones are bad, but I just remember some watching back in the day that, you know, scared the crap out of you. Uh, yeah, my you know, all time favorite, that would top, the one that would top my list, small time favorite would be the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That movie scarred me for life when I saw it as a kid. And so <laughs> it just gets that ranking because that was and, and still today, you know, for the time I was in, that was the scariest movie I had ever watched. So the one that scarred me, my first R rated movie was Predator and growing up in rural Pennsylvania. We play out in the woods a lot, so <laughs> I was uh, staying away from the woods for a couple of days after that. <laughs> it's just these creatures going around that you can't see in the woods, you know. I had a similar experience with Kool Aid. I was afraid to get some out of the fridge, thinking he was going to bust in the wall behind me and scare the piss out of me when I was a kid. <laughs> Kool Aid man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's keep moving. We'll keep moving on this fun list. Uh, music. Uh, do you get into? Do you have like a Halloween playlist each year that you go through? Or uh, not? Uh, no, not really. Uh, when I'm in the mood for the Halloween music, I usually just turn on one of the uh, uh, Halloween stations on Spotify or Amazon Prime Music and get my fix that way. So I'm not really curating my own playlist but mm -hmm. uh, looking at this list there's a lot of the songs i really like any time of year on here yeah very true they put uh number one which i think is everybody's number one which is thriller by michael jackson you know i just thinking about your specials last week that you and tony were talking about there mm -hmm. is a special i remember as a kid that disney put on it was called dtv's monster hits and what they did was they spliced together a bunch of old cartoons that were just like creepy and had ghosts or something. And they used like modern songs or uh, modern to the time. And they had like Thriller and Ghostbusters and Somebody's Watching Me and mm -hmm. the Monster Mash. And they put all these old Disney and I don't even know if they were all Disney or it might have been some other ones in there strung them all together, and then they played this, and then the bumpers in between was the mirror on the wall, the magic mirror, and he was like the host of the show. And, oh, gosh, it was great. It's on YouTube. And that's what I think of when I start thinking about these songs. I think of that special that was run on TV, and, of course, they can't, with all the music licensing and all that, they've never released it. But right. uh, that's what I think of when I start thinking about Halloween music was that special. Well, I'm looking through this list. It's got all the uh, typical ones. Thriller, Monster Mash, Scooby-Doo. Somebody's watching me. You just mentioned Ghostbusters from Ray Parker. Uh, it's got some fun ones. Sympathy for the Devil, Black Magic Woman, mm -hmm. Superstition. Uh, but a very noticeable exception here. And just for the way they titled it, the 20 best Halloween songs for your party playlist. How can you have a Halloween party and not have Adam's Family Groove from MC Hammer on the playlist? <laughs> it's a great party song. Okay. I'll give you that. <laughs> well, I mean, when you get down here towards the end, you got She-Wolf by Shakira. I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah, no. No. The freaks come out at night. There we go. But they've got uh, Nightmare on My Street from DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince on the list, though. So that they get yeah. points for that. Very good. I loved that song with uh, Freddie. It actually was not the uh, real Freddy Krueger voicing on that song. The one that he did was the one with the fat boys. Oh. Little fun fact there for you. 
Good deal. <laughs> it was not Robert England on the, the Jazzy Jeff song. But yeah, I put a little list together several years back. It's got most of these on here. One of my favorites is Oingo Boingo, Dead Man's Party. Have you heard that one? I don't know if I have or not. Oh, I love that song. I think pretty much all the other ones. I don't know. Hall and Oates, Man Eater. That always just, it's kind of a creepy song, right? That is not a Halloween song. I mean, well, maybe it is. But working in retail like I did for years, that was such a uh, uh, elevator type music song <laughs> that was on every grocery store and department store soundtrack. You just got so yeah. sick of hearing it that yeah, I can't I can't do hollow notes anymore. Oh, Houdini also has the Haunted House of Rock. That's a great mm-hmm. song as well. Had to no, put that no one in Frankenstein there. from Edgar Winter's group on the list though. How do they how do they skip that one too? I don't know. I don't know who's curating the list. Yeah. What about this? Uh, to be benched. That's it. <laughs> what about this ghost choir you found? A link that was over on Nidorama, and it's just a fun little video with these ghosts uh, singing. And it's just kind of like a spooky, you know, background type of song. It's not very long though. They should have like looped it a little bit more or something. You could have it playing at your party. Yeah, you can just hit repeat. <laughs> I'm sure you'll want to do that while you're hosting a party. <laughs> well you hit repeat when you start it and then you don't have to hit it during the party <laughs> okay play it on loop yeah all right well let's get into some food and this was really fun you want to take some food to a party you're not going to find a <laughs> cooler can i say cooler a cooler mm-hmm. igloo cooler than this one it's a limited edition scooby-doo mystery machine igloo cooler Man, yeah, the whole box looks like the van, and the like on the end is the is the windshield, and you can see the characters in the van and stuff. I thought that was really cool. It looks really neat. That those coolers always remind me of my dad because that was his lunchbox <laughs> forever uh, yeah. when I was a kid. So that's what you order. You order to get that and make that your lunchbox for work. Yeah, but I'm not taking that much stuff. Well, I don't know how big it is. I mean, they make the small ones. I'm not sure which size this one is. This I thought one, it was like the like no. the 16 inches long version. This it says it can hold 30 cans. So okay, that's a little large. Pretty pretty large for what I'm taking to work. Yeah, uh, but it's pretty cool. We'll put a link up uh, to that and uh, some other just fun stuff uh, going around. Uh, brand eating has. Uh, they put a link up to the Frito-Lay trick-or-treat bags this year. That was really neat that they're, I think you basically order the bag, but it comes with all of the Frito-Lay small bags of chips and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a fun way of just uh, getting your treats to hand out. And then you get a little, you get you know, a little collectible for yourself yeah. after the fact. Those are always neat. The how, how do you feel about the jack o' lantern pizza at Papa John's? Okay, uh, this is a prime example of how Pizza Hut gets it wrong and some other places get it right. Papa John's ain't creating some uh, orange cheese it jack o' lantern pizza pasta stuff thing. Just for a few days, they're taking their normal pizza and just reshaping the crust by hand to make it look like a jack o' lantern. It's still their normal pizza. They ain't trying to reinvent the wheel here. They're just, hey, maybe you just want a special shape to your pizza this week. I'm fine with that. You know, it's in their wheelhouse. It's still their pizza. Right. And they're just shaping the pepperoni, like, and shaping it out like the jack-o'-lantern face. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty I'm, cool, I'm totally actually. fine with that. Yeah, I wonder if you get, like, a commemorative box to put it in. Like an orange box. Well, I think last year they had, uh, it wasn't an orange box, but... It, they had instead of their traditional red and green writing all over their pizza boxes, it was orange and black for a week or two. Yeah. It was their normal logo and stuff. It was just different color scheme, which is nice. Yeah. It's a nice little touch. Mm-hmm. You want that. All right. Let's go over to uh, Dinosaur Dracula and look at his Halloween junk food for 2019. He's got it in actually two parts. I think there's six in each one. And there's probably going to be a third part coming too, knowing Matt. Okay. The first up is the $1 Vampire at Applebee's. It's a drink. Mm -hmm. And it comes with uh, some plastic fangs around your straw. And trying to see what it's like. What is it? 
grape. It's like grape flavored. I guess it's a slightly alcoholic beverage, but it's a purpley color and you get the vampire teeth with it and they call it a vampire. Again, it's a nice, it's just a little simple thing they can do with ingredients they have in house, but it's something for the Halloween season. And I bet with many people like Matt in this world, they are selling a ton of these things. If people walk in, like, Ooh, look, a Halloween drink. Give me one. Yeah. And it's just a buck. I mean, mm-hmm. shoot. It's a nice little add on to your meal. Yep. Make it a little more spooky. He also has the haunted ghost pepper pucky chips found at Seven Eleven. Uh I don't know if I'm be going after these. You no, say these ghost things pepper. are yeah, these things are do not kid yourself, folks. These things are very, very hot. These are injury inducing hot. Ooh, so, yeah. Yes. Yikes. Uh I had some ghost pepper salsa one time and needed to go sit in the creek later. Uh Moving right along. <laughs> Creepy Cocoa Crisp M&M's. Yeah, now that looked really good. Now these have so, like Cocoa Krispies inside? Well, you know, M&M's makes uh, the brand of Crispy M&M's. It has some knockoff like Rice crispy type candy inside of it. This is the same thing, but it's a Cocoa version of that knockoff Rice crispy cereal okay, inside of okay. it. Okay, so, hmm. But the package is really Halloween-y. Really cool looking. Yeah. I might have to try those. I'm not big into chocolate, but... That looked pretty good. Okay. At uh, Cold Stone Creamery, you can get Boo Batter Ice Cream. That looks this, disgusting. That looks like a hot mess. It's ice cream <laughs> with a whole lot of black food coloring in it. <laughs> but it's it features, it's like their uh, birthday cake batter ice cream, but they paint it, you know, they've colored black it. Dye. And it's got uh, Kit Kats and Halloween Oreo cookies and M&M's all crushed up throughout it. So, I mean, I, it probably tastes pretty good. It just doesn't look very good. Yeah, you look at the <laughs> you look at the promotional picture that he puts above it and then what he actually got. Yeah, it, it looks a whole lot less appealing. Because <laughs> you don't see all the little bits that are inside there. You know, the Oreos and the Kit Kats and right. M&M's. It's just a goop. And then the maple cream Oreos. I have seen these. They're at Target. I just saw them yesterday. I should have grabbed a bag because I will do maple. I like maple. But he, um, what, does he what does he say here? Not quite pancakes and syrup, but they're close. Yeah. So, I don't know. I would go for something like that. Yeah, it's the, um, it's the golden cookie and the maple flavored cream. It, it's got to be a, a good combination. It just has to be. Mm-hmm. And then the, the end of the first part here, he's got another drink from Chili's called the Fantastic Rita. I love me some margarita now. And <laughs> Another vampire-themed cocktail. You get some black vampire teeth with those. Um, <laughs> that I don't know why you go purple with vampire. I'd rather see something like this that's red, you know, like blood. Right. So he enjoyed that, A+. plus. All right, I'm going to click over to part two. Let's go through these. Oh, that's that first one looks really good. Oh, wow. The Slime Shake. That's at Carvel. Oh, Carvel made the craziest Halloween commercials back in the day for their ice cream cakes. Did you ever have Carvel in your area? No, we never have. Really? No. Maybe that was like a, I don't know, farther north thing. But, oh, this looks really good. A Slime Shake. What's the flavor? Is it is it a green apple cookies or something? And cream. It's cookies and cream flavored. Oh, okay. Yeah. Edible slime. Okay. So, I don't know. I just think green. I think green apple, and I'm not a big green apple fan. <laughs> oh, wow. So, <laughs> looks like he had to go to eBay to find the next one, which is kettle apple cider vinegar chips. Mm, that sounds so good. I love I- salt and vinegar chips, but... The uh, the apple cider vinegar, I just think that would make for a really good chip. It has to be a, a certain... I can't do just a straight lay salt and vinegar. Something like this I might be able to, to stand, but... Well, we have this kettle brand here in our area. I've not looked mm-hmm. for these yet, but this is something that uh, I'm going to have to look for. Yeah, we have kettle too. I get them once in a while, but now that Walmart does their own kettle chips and stuff, I get those. Now, these look fun. I saw these mm-hmm. over on his... Uh, Social media this week, too. The Double Bubble Ghoulish Gumballs. You can find these at CBS, and I might have to just 
pause the podcast and go get some of these. But <laughs> these look really cool. They've got five different styles of gumballs, and each one has a different thing inside. Mm-hmm. So, like, you've got <laughs> the one that I think is cool is the pumpkin. You get yep. the pumpkin, there's like, <laughs> it looks like pumpkin seeds inside. Yeah, little orange candies. That's great. And then the green one, you got the slime inside. What else do we got here? The eyeball looks like it had some kind of like white cream inside of it. Mm -hmm. And then the little black one has got like a red blood cream stuff in it. (laughs) These look really cool. And he gave it (laughs) an A with, with three pluses. Uh, next to it just for the presentation you know some of this stuff you want it to taste good but th- the presentation is everything especially around halloween and to see something like this even if it just the flavor lasts for you know two minutes like double bubble usually does i'm mm-hmm. not going to care I-, I just want the experience of whatever's inside too you know that looks pretty good and then uh at halloween horror nights i'm not sure where that is that is an attraction at Universal Studios. Okay. Yeah, so this they, is not going to be obtainable for most people listening. They were giving away Killer Clown cotton candy bars. Cotton candy flavored white chocolate with jelly beans embedded in it. <laughs> that looks interesting. <laughs> it looks worth trying. I don't know that it would be up my alley, but I would certainly give it a taste. Yeah, I like the cotton candy flavor, so that might be something... And then finally at Walgreens, the mini candy corn and chocolate peanuts. Yes, the Brock's mixes. Brock's always mixes the best stuff. I've never had uh, candy corn with anything else. I've had the different flavors of candy corn. Really? You know, I'm not a huge fan of candy corn. We've talked about this, but you, mm-hmm. you throw a handful of candy corn into something like a big bowl of popcorn. Oh, it's a game changer. Where you're just reaching down there, eating it, and you get a piece of candy corn with all that salty popcorn every so often. Oh, you never you're tried out. that. I need to do like my own mix this year or something. Yeah. Just throw in some random stuff. Uh, and then, well, speaking of candy corn, I found an article too that goes through all the different flavors that Ferrera, who puts out the uh, candy corn stuff, has this year. We've got the. Sour Bright Candy Corn, which looks like like Sour Patch Kids, shaped like the candy corn. You've got the what we just talked about, the mini candy corn with peanuts, chocolate peanuts. Pumpkin Pie Candy Corn. You've got the Donut Shop Candy Corn. They have three different flavors in that. Strawberry glazed, chocolate glazed, and original glazed. And then you have Mermaid Candy Corn. Mm. which is a mix of six flavors, strawberry, lemon, green apple, grape, raspberry, and orange. And they've got fun shapes with those. But they also, I didn't realize there was this many flavors of candy corn. Caramel, s'mores, football candy corn. I guess maybe they're little footballs. Uh, Naturally flavored, (laughs) classic, harvest. And then you got the mellow cream, scary shapes, autumn mix, and pumpkins. So, I don't know. Would any of those stick out to you, like some of the new flavors you might not have tried no. that you'd like to? No, because I'm not an overly big fan of candy corn in the first place. Just way too sweet for me. Well, we found that uh, the unicorn candy corn. I still haven't gone to pick up a bag of that yet. I, I might try that. The donut one sounds interesting to me that mm-hmm. I might get a bag. I don't, they don't make little bags of candy corn. That's what they need to do, like they do with Jelly Belly, you know, because yeah. if you don't like the flavor, then you're only I got a small little bag to. Well, speaking of Jelly Belly, of. Uh-huh. well, here you go. I seen at the store the other day a small bag, like you're talking, mm-hmm. of candy corn made by Jelly Belly. Now, these are not really? candy corn jelly beans. It says it is the uh, original gourmet candy corn from Jelly Belly, and it's in a small little pouch. So maybe that's what you should look for. Hmm. I will. Because I do like hey, some jelly beans now. Before we move on, yeah. somehow I seen a link on something we was looking at. Freeform, who does the 25 Days of Christmas. Yes. I did not know that now they do a 31 Nights of Halloween. And I'm looking at their schedule. This is pretty cool. If I still had cable, I'm sure we'd watch a lot of this like we used to do 25 Days of Christmas. Like tomorrow, they're showing The Corpse Bride. 
the Addams Family movie, the Addams Family Values movie, Nightmare Before Christmas, Hotel Transylvania, and the Goosebumps movie. That's not a bad little lineup. No, that's like the family, what used to be the family channel, right? Yeah, and looking on down through here, they've got the Scooby-Doo movies, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2. Uh, And this one, I'm kind of shocked to see this. A three-hour Simpsons Treehouse of Horror-thon on free. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Of course, Disney's Monsters Incorporated, and it looks like they're showing Hocus Pocus quite a bit. Now, that's Uh, just a cable app or cable channel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, I want to say they have an app, too, but I don't know that you could. You'd probably have to have it. I'm going to have to go check it out and see. It's probably one of those ones like AMC or the rest of them. You have to have a cable subscription to log in to get all the content on there. But so, I don't know. Some of them have a, a a few free things that you can watch through their yeah. app without having to log in. Yeah, but I just thought that was interesting. I didn't know they'd oh, done it cool. for Halloween now like they've always done it for Christmas. So, yeah, there that's you cool. go. Go check it out, folks. I see Edward Scissorhands is on their monthly schedule. Hook. That sounds pretty good. Well, just a couple more things. We'll get on to our uh, time machine topic. Uh, I keep forgetting about this, that they're doing this each year. Because uh, I'll take the boys, even the, the youngest, to free comic book day in May, which is, the I think, the first Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I don't know if you've got a local comic shop there near you. Close but, enough. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Well, they do uh, what's essentially free comic book day in October, usually around Halloween each year. It might be the last Saturday in October each year, but it's called Halloween Comic Fest. And I went through the lineup uh, for this year. What's really cool, you know, you're always looking for something different to hand out to kids. You know, if you're a big comic book fan, this year they've got mini comics, like a 25 pack that you can pick up for five bucks and hand those out instead of candy. There you go. So, like the old man I talked about who used to give us baseball cards. It was right. really cool to get something because you were getting so much candy anyway. Yeah. This is a great thing. Maybe introduce some kids to a form of reading that they may not be used to. Open their, their mind a little bit. That, that's a great idea. Yeah. So I'll give you a few that just kind of caught my eye as the, the free comic books this year and, and the mini comics. There's an Archie Madhouse magic mini comic you can get with uh, all the Archie characters. I think it's actually uh, uh, several different stories in there. The Junior High Horrors Halloween Special number one. This looked really fun. I wasn't familiar with uh, this uh, Junior High or whatever comic series, but it looked like it parodied a lot of the classic slasher characters like Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees and Ooh. Mike Myers, uh, in the artwork that I saw. So check out that one, junior high horrors, Halloween special number one, and then some regular issues that you can pick up for free. There's a Sonic, the hedgehog number one from IDW. There was nothing Halloween about that. Some of these are just, they'll just release a, you know, a free number one to, to try to get you hooked on the series. Uh, Marvel Star Wars Age of Rebellion Boba Fett number one. My Ooh. middle son is huge into Boba Fett, so I'm going to go try to pick up that one for him. There's uh, one called Secret Spiral of Swamp Kid. This is from Ooh. DC. And uh, from what I read, it's kind of like uh, a teenage Swamp Thing uh, story. So I thought that was fun. That, uh, that that's, that's good you know, for around Halloween. And uh, to get people uh, interested in in Swamp Thing, uh, since they decided not to, you know, make that series over there. I think it was on the DC app or something. They got like one or two episodes in and pulled the pulled the plug. Um, There's an underdog mini comic, underdog hijinks that you can pick up and, and hand out. And there's also a Usagi Yojimbo. If you remember that character from the Ninja Turtles. Very well. Uh, there's a mini comic with him. So you've got several choices there. These are just a few that I found that were kind of retro centric. You would say, well, that Archie comic, uh, is it, is it one of the ones that's available as the 25 pack or whatever? Yes. Yes. That would be a big hit with kids these days due to the popularity of the Riverdale television show. So I, I think that would be great to hand out. Yeah. So head over to your local comic book shop and, and check that out. That's on October 26th. So and that's, tell them, it's coming Saturday. Tell them, tell them that Mickey and Jason sent you. And yeah. if they ask who's Mickey and Jason, 
pull out your phone and start playing the podcast for everybody in the place to hear. <laughs> there you go. And if they've got a uh, Amazon Echo nearby, I, I could tell you how to play it from there too. I'll tell <laughs> you how to do that coming up. Yeah, Just hijack the whole thing. <laughs> Now, uh, there's several blogs that I follow that do like a Halloween themed, whatever you want to call it, blogathon uh, throughout October. And since we had Paxton Holly on uh, as a, a guest back in June when we were doing the Batman 89 interviews, he does one every October. Actually, I think this is, he might have skipped last year, he said. But anyway. Uh, this year, it's mainly Elvira stuff, which I know you would love to check out, Mickey. Right yeah, now I might he's not done... read any of it, but I'll go look at the pictures anyway. <laughs> his <laughs> his blog is called Cavalcade of Awesome, and he does this what he calls Awesome Toberfest. And so far, he's got nine posts put together featuring Elvira, including a review of her movie, some TV cameos, and even video game appearances. So. That was really fun this year. There's also, I did an interview for uh, Dex, who is the A-E-I-O-U and sometimes Y, W-H-Y blog. Uh, he interviews a, a ton of people, and it's just basically old Halloween memories. And he's put a string of them together this year. I've been reading as they have been released, and he invited me to do the, the interview with that. So I uh, wanted to pl- give him a plug as well. And we'll put a link up to those two sites uh, in the show notes too. But is there any of yours that you follow that any blogs that, that do something like that each year for Halloween? Well, I guess really the, the big one would just be mad over at dinosaur Dracula. It's, and it's, that's every day of the year, pretty much there's something horror <laughs> right. related. Right. So that's where I get, you know, we talk about not watching horror movies. That's where I get my horror and scary and spooky fix is through Matt because it's done in such a fun way. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, like, He's a kindred spirit with myself when it comes to food. About half the posts on his site have to do yep. with food, and half of those are Halloween food. And yeah, that's where I get my Halloween fix generally. He, uh, it's been a while ago, but he did one on those hot dogs with had the chili in the middle. Oh yeah, and it just was a total mind jolt to me. And putting up the commercials for it and everything, and I was, oh yes, this is great. So he, he goes all out on the food stuff too, as well as the horror stuff. And I will look and see, you know, each month he does those, the, the packs. Yeah. And before I could even look to see what was in the one for Halloween, they were sold out. So <laughs> uh, he's got some cool stuff in there too. That's just a way that he uh, helps to keep his site going and everything. So those are fun. I know you've opened up a couple of those, haven't you? Yeah, I used to be on the subscription list for those, and he uh, he curates them very, very meticulously, and every single thing in the box is just is so much fun. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to put a bow on this uh, edition of the Halloween party recurrent events. We're going to keep the party going up next with our review of the Paul Lind Halloween special from 1976. So stick around. Wednesday, it's a hair-raising Halloween happening. Can she begin it? First, that Emmy-winning fat cat. It's the trick-or-treat trail. I'm no scaredy cat. It's all new Garfield's Halloween adventure. Then... I hear the Great Pumpkin! The Halloween classic, It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, right after Garfield Wednesday. Friday, a Halloween special starring Paul Lynn. Turning myself on. And his special guests, Tim Conway, Florence Henderson, Donnie and Marie Osmond, Pinky Tuscadero, and the incredible Kiss. Then, Rosemary's baby has come of age. For a birthday boy. Satan has come to reclaim his son. No! Due to mature subject matter, parental discretion is advised. Look what's happened to Rosemary's baby right after Paul Lynn. Friday, starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain on ABC. <laughs> All right, welcome back to The Time Machine, sponsored by Retro Days. And the Retro Days Halloween special is coming October the 25th at 8.30 p.m. You can head over to retro-daze.org. Make sure you're signed up for a free account, and you'll be all set to 
go to the theater. You can actually the the doors open at seven fifteen. I believe that's a Friday night. That's this coming yes, Friday night. Is. Doors will open at seven fifteen, so you can get signed in and and hang out there a little bit before the show starts at eight thirty. If you want to do something like that, but I'm I'm so excited to see what's going on this year, man. I would be too, but I'll be at work Friday night, oh, so I'll have to catch no. it on. I'll have yeah, to catch it on YouTube the day. You'll after. be uh, yeah, you'll be the one of the ones that go. We'll go over to uh, YouTube so we don't crash the site as we're watching it live. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> I'll be in that second it. half. Well, that is uh, that's I'm really looking forward to that this week. Yeah, I've seen some preview clips and. Uh, I, I, I'm looking very much forward to watching it the next time I'm off since it'll be on YouTube. Uh, we'll stream it across the big screen and the family and I will watch it. We usually watch all those specials together here at home on the big screen. So they really enjoy them. Nice. Yeah. I, after finally upgrading my Roku, the YouTube app seems to work a lot better on mm-hmm. our screen. So Maybe I'll have to in- introduce the boys to that as well this year. See what they think of that. But uh, here we go. The Paul Lind Halloween special. Now, how, where did you, because uh, you're the one that told me, hey, man, we got to watch this and go through it because it's just uh, craziness. Uh, how did well, you kind of get to that point with <laughs> the special? Yeah, strap yourself in. Uh, when I was younger, I had some older friends who talked about it almost in mythical like tones. I'm like, what is this? Well, somehow, some way, uh, somebody had a VHS copy of it when I was younger. It wasn't recorded from the special. I don't know how they had it, but I watched it and I thought, uh, eh, eh, you know, was that an impression? (laughs) no, No, I guess it could have been. And somebody told me, you have to watch it in the right state of mind if you get where I'm going. So I watched it in a different state of mind and absolutely loved it. (laughs) And then I went back and watched it, you know, several times through the years, just as normal old Mickey. And I still love it. But uh, I love it more now because of of how many throwbacks you see in it. Mm -hmm. But I sat down with the family last night. I'm like, hey, we're going to be talking about this on the pod tomorrow. You all have never seen it. It's Halloween. Let's watch it. So they watched it. And they're, uh, after it was over, I was like, yeah, well, what do you think? And my wife just is just sitting there staring. And she looked at me. She says, I don't get it. And I was like, of course you don't. But that's okay. <laughs> it's not supposed to make sense. There's nothing about this that is supposed to make much sense other than for people who's not familiar with it. Paul, Lynn, let's do a little bit of history of Paul Lynn first, though. Okay. Some people listen may not even know who Paul Lind is. Paul Lind started out as a regular on the old Perry Como show. Most people, well, I ain't say most, about half the people are familiar with him. He always played Uncle Arthur on the old Bewitch TV series. And growing up, that was always on in syndication and reruns. So I'm sure people right. are familiar. I'd say his most iconic role, though, was on Hollywood Squares. He was almost always the center square on Hollywood Squares. He was put there by the producers of the show because he could instantly come up with these one liners and keep the show moving and being in the center square. You knew he was going to get called on. Mm -hmm. Uh, He done several other specials besides his Halloween special. He'd actually done one the year before this, the Paul in comedy hour in 1975 and the ratings were good and they wanted to do another one. And this is what we got out of it. But the general gist of the show is it Halloween? Okay, let me stop again right quick. If you are of a certain age or younger, you're not going to remember when TV specials featured a lot of musicals and musical acts, which seemed to be how most shows were were yeah. uh, designed back in the 60s and 70s. You had to have some musical numbers in it. I think that's part of why my family didn't get it last night. And I explained to my kids, it's like, this come from a time when you had three television channels, Okay. And you got to see Gunsmoke every night or every week and just shows like that. It was the same thing over and over. A special like this was truly special. And they really can't wrap their head around this concept that there was a time that if you wanted to see Guns N' Roses in a live performance, you couldn't just go to YouTube and watch it whenever you wanted to. 
you actually had to wait for something like them to be on the tonight show or Saturday night live or something. It was an event. Right. And so you get a lot of these musical acts on these specials. It was an event. You didn't see it. You looked forward to it. I'm not yeah. sure what the ratings were like for this, but uh, it was a big enough deal when it came out that people still talk about it today. I, th- if my research was correct, it only aired once. Mm-hmm. And that is correct. it was not, um, from what I could tell people, especially like kiss fans, I think you were saying were searching it out just to get the kiss performances mm-hmm. off this, but it was in a time. Yeah. When the variety show was huge, Donnie right. Marie and, uh, everybody had uh, a, a variety show, or at least each network did. And it was full of skit. You're like hee haw. Hee haw was, you know, musical acts and they did the comedy and like sketch comedy and such. The little, you know, well, no, jokes. Don't don't be putting the great hee haw down at the same level <laughs> as other, other variety shows that you're talking about. I'm just, okay? I'm, just <laughs> I'm just trying to capture the the moment that was, you know, mid seventies TV. Well you compare this to hee haw, you're gonna build the expectations for this up. No, way too, I'm not I'm not listen. Too. Listen, my dad loved Hee Haw. I watched a lot of Hee Haw as a kid. So, yeah, that's a totally different level. I'll I'll give you that. Yeah, it's the gold standard of variety. Yeah. So, (laughs) you know, that was just the the era. And I listened to the Gilbert Gottfried podcast uh, pretty religiously. And his podcast, he calls it the Amazing Colossal Podcast. And they go into, like, old school Hollywood from, like, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. And they have guests on that, you know, were rubbing elbows with really famous Hollywood stars of the time. And uh, Gilbert Gottfried does an amazing Paul Lynn impression, by the way. But there's some stories about him, too, that, that have come across there that has just been great. So if you're looking to get into kind of that era of uh, television and the variety shows and, and the movies of the time, the old, you know, like horror movies from the 50s and such the the mummy and the you know all the dracula movies and bella lugosi that kind of a thing go check out his show because i've i've learned i've soaked in a lot of knowledge just from listening to him and 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 the interviews that he has over there one was bruce valanche who wrote the special oh really yeah he and he was on hollywood squares when whoopi goldberg was the center square if you'll remember that when gilbert Gottfried was actually on the show too. And I watched a YouTube video. It was just a short little interview with Bruce Valanche, uh, talking about the special and some of the things that went on behind the scenes. That was a really good watch, uh, especially leading into the special, which I had never seen before. Well, so, general, just general overview. What, what did you think of it? Uh, I think it should have been called the Paul Lind Halloween special of punchlines. Like yes. his whole dialogue is just punchlines. And I'm sure that's, it was like written in his contract. All right. I'm going to get to do the, the punchlines of every joke, <laughs> except, well, except for, for, yeah, except yeah, except for. <laughs> the, the discotheque like monologue with the, the witches. He didn't get the, the jokes there. They butted in on him a little bit. And then when he tried to do a, a punchline, then it fell flat, which in itself was a joke. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, it was just, <laughs> I don't know. A well, little Paul over Lynn, still for people who don't know, Paul Lynn was a comedian, a singer, a dancer, an actor. He is the person who could anchor a special like this, right? Like a Bob Hope. I mean, he was not on the level of Bob Hope, but folks in that vein or who you tapped to do specials like this, who could do a little bit of everything. And we got to see a little bit of everything in this. Yeah. But just overall thoughts on the special, the writing was the best thing. <laughs> if that tells you anything. It wasn't necessarily the performances and the musical numbers and such, but the writing was great. I thought that was just fun in itself. Uh, it's his delivery every time for the punchline. So it, you, you get that same repetitive, you know, and he's laughing, you know, and stuff, but <laughs> the writing was great. Well, I don't know who would be the one responsible. And maybe it was a lot of different hands coming together, on picking the guest stars for this, but they done an awesome job for this special. Yeah. At least I think, uh, it, most people won't know who this is now, but Ross Kelly, pinky Tuscadero from different stuff, especially happy days. 
uh, Billy Hayes, who played Witchy Poo on uh, uh, what well, HR Puff and stuff. Yeah, and they actually so. borrowed the character for this special. Mm-hmm. Florence Henderson from the Brady Bunch. Betty White before she was uber popular when she was just on like one show. Uh, Margaret Hamilton, who played the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizard of Oz. A lot of Air fans will know Billy Barty, maybe without knowing his name, played Gwildor on the Masters of the Universe movie in the late 80s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The hottest band in the world, Kiss. And you got a quick cameo appearance from Donnie and Marie Osmond. So, uh, And I think I forgot to mention Tim Conway, actually. Tim Conway, yep. So that is a heck of a lineup of guest stars for any kind of special, especially when you're Paul Lind. Because I would wager that several, if not more than half of those names, would be bigger stars than Paul Lind. Definitely. Yeah, especially when, you know, it's not like he had his own sitcom or or show. He was mainly a guest star when he was on, right? Right. Yeah, he had, uh, like I said, he played Uncle Arthur on Bewitched. And when it came to an end, he had, he started in a short-lived series called The Paul Lind Show. And it finished out. They canceled Bewitched halfway through the season. The Paul Lynch show played the second half of that season, and that was the end of it as well. Okay. But, yeah, that was it pretty much for his starring roles. So (laughs) he was a uh, supporting actor. He was a featured actor. He was a guest star. He guest starred on so many shows, though. I looked the list up to be talking about this. I was going to write some down, and I thought, you know what? There is way too many. I'll just say (laughs) he guest starred in a lot of television (laughs) shows. Yeah, I looked at his uh, IMDb, and yeah, there was definitely a ton of shows that he was on. And And not only uh, that, through the early 80s, he was a voice actor on a lot of people's favorites cartoons, too. You can go back and look all that up. He he done a lot of voice acting work as well. mm Okay. Well, how do you want to do this? You want to just run down, kind of run down the segments and well, yeah. go through so, some of the scenes? Or? I'll tell you what, I got them kind of wrote down in order. I'll just kind of guide us through them, and we'll just talk about whatever comes through with them. Okay. So in the special, it opens up, and you got Paul in in his house, and you have his housekeeper, Margaret, who is uh, Margaret Hamilton, but you're not supposed to know that. Uh, she, uh, and her name is Margaret. Paul's getting ready to celebrate Christmas. She has to inform him it's not Christmas. And they do this little song and dance back and forth for several different holidays before he finally admits that it's Halloween. But that just leads you to the general premise of the show is that Margaret wants Paul to come to her house to avoid the kids on Halloween. And when he gets there, he finds out that she is the Wicked Witch of the West that we all know from Right. Wizard of Oz. Her sister is Witchy Poo from HR Puff and stuff. And they want Paul to, to be a spokesman for witches because they've got a bad name through the years. And in exchange for him being the spokesman, they grant him three wishes. And those three wishes are what make up the bulk of this special. That's right. Yeah. He, um, he came out with a monologue a little bit after that holiday gag that they did, you know, and, I don't know. Those the the jokes were good, but it's just kind of like, okay, get on with the show, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's how I was. But yeah, you had that. You know, it led right into that musical number about kids, and mm-hmm. they like <laughs> tie them up, put them in that trash can, and blow it up. And Donnie Marie is the ones at the end that are just like, you know, put the the last little touch on that to trap them in there. Yeah, and uh, they come on and do a little quick cameo, just a quick, yeah. quick cameo. Is I figured they would have used them more in this, but yeah, it was weird that they just did it for that. Just did it for the FaceTime, essentially. <laughs> and I think I read they weren't even billed, so it was a total surprise to everyone, really, that they well, were going to be on the show, the audience. Well, he mentioned them in his monologue. Did he? Okay, yeah. and, and their tie-in was they had their variety show on at this time That's and right. Paul Lynn was uh, a guest on theirs almost constantly. Okay. I got you. Show. So that was the tie in. But when you <laughs> when they get to the house <laughs> yeah. and you got the witches and Paul's just kind of not knowing what's going on or what to do and their servant is played by Billy Barty and pardon my language, but he comes waddling out. You know, I made a, a note of several of my favorite lines from this. Uh-huh. And he's bringing those drinks out on the tray and they're like little cauldrons and they're smoking. And he asked Paul if he wants anything. And Paul says, no, thanks. thanks. I don't smoke. It's such a growth. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And Billy Barty 
Billy Barty turns around and kicks him in the shin. I laughed. <laughs> that was a good bit. Oh. Uh, yeah, but, and that was, I don't know, the uh, the barking uh, vulture outside. I don't know about that. <laughs> and when the witches talk about having a, a beauty contest, he's like, wait, you had a beauty contest and somebody so, won? Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty funny. <laughs> that was good. But I think maybe my, my favorite line of this whole special was they're granting his first wish. They're like, what do you, what do you want? And he says, I want to be a trucker. <laughs> I'm like, okay. You want to be a trucker. Well, for people who don't know, Paul was the most openly closeted gay man in Hollywood during his right. time. I mean, it's like he would, he never came out and said it, but he didn't hide it. He played into it. He done the double entendres. It was known. And so that's part of what makes his comedy so funny now is I want to be a trucker. <laughs> your, your brain sometimes goes places it shouldn't knowing who he is. Right. <laughs> because he wanted to be the rhinestone trucker. The rhinestone. And, yeah. and he's instantly transported into this rhinestone getup. What they call him? Uh, uh, Shoot, I can't remember what they were calling him in it now, but something, I'm something, something, the rhinestone truck. <laughs> yeah. And hearing him talk on the CB with the CB lingo, and uh, they end up him and Tim Conway, another trucker, fighting over the affection of Pinky Tuscadero, Ross Kelly at that uh, truck stop Diner. diner. Yeah. I thought all that was just solid gold comedy myself. I, I just really enjoyed the back and forth with him and Tim Conway. Tim Conway doing an excellent job like he always does playing a doofus uh and yeah uh, ross kelly pinky tuscadero wow you know yeah. i mean she she had it going on back in 1976 she, she was a knockout for sure mm. I, yeah once they finally got to the diner and then he, you know he drives the truck through the freaking wall <laughs> that was a pretty good gag and you, you could tell the audience were like cheering over that one weren't yeah. expecting that or i don't know maybe they were but I think there was a whole lot about this they weren't expecting. Uh, true, true. You missed, though, when Betty White came on right before they grant him the wish. Oh, yeah, I did say that. She, she just totally puts him in a hole, man, because she's like, you couldn't get anybody else like Paul McCartney or you. Oh, I was going to have a date with Paul Newman. Yeah, you and promised me Paul Newman. <laughs> oh, hi, Paul Lynn. Well, he was available. Okay. <laughs> 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 that was a pretty good bit. And I don't remember at which point in the show we get the first appearance of Kiss. I believe it was right around here. Well, they do the that trucker song bit right after that with the two <laughs> trucks in the background. And uh, I can't remember what the song was, but it was right after that when they came back, I think, from the commercial that they pump into the first Kiss song. And that was like my favorite, probably my favorite moment of the whole thing was when they introduce kiss and they come down in that elevator. Right. And slide so it open. Teasing, the witches said they kept them in a, in a little chamber. They asked him about, would he like some chamber music? And he's like, sure. I don't see any musicians. They're like, we keep them in a little chamber. And here comes that caged elevator yeah, down. with yeah. Kiss on board in full makeup and gear. And they hop out of there and start playing. Yeah. That was pretty great. Yeah. That was just a great entrance. And really. they opened up with Detroit rock city. Great song for, for hitting the screen with. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they just brought it. That first song, you could tell they're lip syncing. But oh, of course. At, that was the time. So it, mm. if you're watching these old specials like this and you see stuff like that, you just got to kind of ignore it because that was the norm back then. Well, what you have to look for is you know they're lip syncing, so they could really phone in the entire performance. Right. But here, Kiss does it. They have a lot of energy on the stage, oh. even though they're lip syncing. I mean, they're all over the place. They are putting on a show. Oh, yeah. Paul Stanley, holy crap, man. He just brought it. Yeah. And so eccentric. And so uh, he just, it was just like they were performing. You, you could tell that it was a little bit off with the lip sync. But watching it from a distance, you wouldn't know. You know? Right. And they could have phoned it in, you know, knowing they're lip syncing. They could have went through the motions, but they didn't. Much kudos yeah. to those guys. They really brought it for this this and special. It, it really felt like a concert. They're using like the pyrotechnics and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, in in that number mainly, and then in the the final number, not so much the Beth one, but 
because that's just like a. <laughs> you're not using pyrotechnics during bath, but. Uh, yeah, we only got Beth on this special because it was the number one right. record at that point in time. It had yeah. no place in this show it whatsoever. No place. No, and but the fact that it didn't have a place in the show made it have a place in this show because nothing had a place in this show. It does, man. I'm watching them. Like, really, you're going into Beth, and that was the only rational thought that I had was, okay, it must have been like number one on the radio at the time that they played it. Or the time that they shot the special to, because <laughs> that just brings the whole mood down, you know, and get the candles. Oh, the last one with those, like, uh, it, it wasn't candles, those, uh, it was something that was like on fire, <laughs> the candelabras, you know, mm-hmm. as they're doing the, the finale number. That was oh, great. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Okay. But I well, think we uh, leave uh, all of that, and we go into his next wish, where he wants to be a sheik in the desert or something. Uh, awkward. <laughs> very, very awkward. Uh, he just laid it on <laughs> Florence Henderson. Holy crap! I'm like, yes, really? You come up for air? Holy cow! <laughs> <laughs> what was that line he had? I'm going to give you a case of lip lash. <laughs> lip lash. Oh, and then, yeah, and then they go through that huge, like, <laughs> passionate kiss. And then she comes up, and she's like, okay, I'm waiting. <laughs> I don't know how a lot of his uh, comedy on this special flew on television in 1976. Yeah. Because uh, they're talking about what it was, the cockatoo or the cockatrice or whatever. <laughs> And he, es- he escapes custody from from the guy from the Foreign Legion. And she says, how did you escape? He said, I gave him the cockatoo. Yeah. It's lonely. <laughs> A man gets lonely in the Foreign oh, Legion. No. <laughs> that uh, wouldn't fly on TV today. No, no. And there's another line better than that coming up later that I don't know how they got past the, the <laughs> sensors, but Yeah, there was several things with that skit that I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. In our current Me Too generation, that skit would not exist on a special today. No, absolutely. It was almost glorified rape on television to start the skit with. But oh, wow! And then what? What comes after this? Is that the disco? Well, I think that's when we get the Beth performance. But uh, so we get to the disco tech, and and Paul is he wants to help the witches a little bit. He's letting them have his third wish. And they've always wanted to host, what was it, a discotheque party. Right. So they want Paul to help them host. So you're instantly transported to a discotheque, which is not really playing disco music. <laughs> and uh, you see them coming down the elevator and they're telling some jokes. Uh, let's see and if I got. And that's where there. you get the, uh, the Florence Henderson number doing old right. black magic. Well, they're showing all these people doing this dance in it. And somebody makes a comment on it. And he says. Tim Conway was out there doing the monkey and somebody says until the monkey bit him. (laughs) How in the world that got past the (laughs) the sensors? I'll never know. But Jason is right. The most surreal moment to me of this entire special is when Florence Henderson comes out and sings disco. And this, the disco tech scene is my favorite scene from the whole thing because you've got everybody in it. You've got Tim Conway there. You've got Florence Henderson singing disco. And speaking of Florence Anderson, how hot did she rank on the hotness scale in 1976 here? I got her like at a solid seven and a half to eight. <laughs> she was a lot hotter than the Brady Bunch. Yeah, definitely. Yes, she was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, but while all this is going on, up on the balcony, you see shots of them every so often. It's Kiss standing there just kind of almost dancing along to the disco music. And <laughs> so you have all these factors going at the discotheque. It's, it's just fantastic that whole yeah. scene is great from beginning to end yeah it was it was fun it probably wasn't my favorite like i said but uh <laughs> it was just it was just weird i guess seeing kiss up there and somewhat into disco you know <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> and then they let him have a they let paul have one more wish and he wishes that that fantastic young band kiss would play one more song for us. And they come out and kind of close everything out with King of the nighttime world. And I was thinking like, why would they not play creatures of the night? And then I thought, Oh yeah, this is 1976. They probably haven't written or performed creatures of the night. Yet. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> that was a great uh, line there. One of my favorites of this whole special when he meets Kiss. He's like, mm-hmm. oh, just what I always wanted. Four kisses on the first date. You know? yeah. <laughs> and then his follow-up line. Let me guess how you come up with your band name. Uh, you had a fight. Your parents told you to kiss and make up. And Gene Simmons just deadpans him. We don't wear makeup. Oh, yeah, yeah. He asked him, how, do you, how long does it take to put on your makeup? We don't yeah. wear makeup. <laughs> <laughs> but Kiss wow. done a really good job with this. They did. And I got a little did you know for you. Okay. Did you know that this 1976 Paul in Halloween TV special was the first appearance Kiss ever had on public television? Oh, really? So not in the, the fact that it, they were one of the already one of the hottest bands in the world from a radio play and that this was being advertised as guest starring kiss. Like you talked about the kiss fans go back and try to track mm-hmm. down this. That's why it's such a, a, or a, a time before you could find it on YouTube. Such a rarity was cause this was kiss this first national television appearance and people knew about it coming up and these diehard kiss fans who had, had just started, you know, with the band when they got hot, they were dying to see them live because they had heard the stories. They had seen the newspaper photos of this band and this get up and mass, but most of America had never seen kiss until this special. They didn't know what kiss was That's all about crazy. until they watched this. So, and I think in that regard, kiss hit it out of the park. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's weird, you know, just thinking about being a Kiss fan back then and waiting to get to see them. And mm-hmm. you're probably like, oh, my gosh, when are they getting to Kiss in this? And then they give them three songs. I mean, that's great. Yeah. You wouldn't think about that for, you know, whatever. Well, it was an hour special, I guess. But and Which may be why we got the song Beth, even though it didn't fit the special. Maybe it was an attempt to show a different side of Kiss, you know, for their first national yeah. viewing to... Hey, they, they're more than just makeup and face paint. They sing. <laughs> oh, how did, how did you like that rotating camera too? <laughs> oh yeah. That was pretty dang cool. <laughs> Some high tech stuff back then, man, you get well, the pyrotechnics and you get the road, the rotating camera. Well, I'm glad you brought up that rotating camera because I was thinking about the special effects when I saw that, not as in a, Oh my gosh, how'd they do that? But in like in 1976, how'd they do that? <laughs> I'm like, was it a camera they were just turning around or was it through editing after the fact that they spun the picture? I would you know, say nowadays would... you could do it any way you wanted to do it today, but I wondered then what kind of technique they were using. See, I, I was thinking they were able to do that live as they're recording because that's when they were using it. They did use it, I think, for a couple transitions and they spun the camera and spun it back or something to get to the next scene or something, but during the it was just weird during the f- performance and then there you go you're start rotating it and it was just weird <laughs> yeah but all in all that. for a time capsule of 1976 i thought this paul in halloween special was a lot of fun yeah it, it is like you said it is a time capsule and not all of it is centered around halloween i mean the 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 story going throughout is but you get you know the trucker thing <laughs> You get the disco deck and, you know, it's not just straight Halloween all the way through. So, and the chic thing, but (laughs) that's uh, that's a little bit more into the, you know. That's scary in its own kind of way. It's like going inside Paul Lynn's head, you know. Yeah. I don't know how many people want to do that. Yeah. Oh, uh, Another did you know for you about Uh Paul Lynn. Paul Lynn was on Hollywood Squares a long time. You care to take a guess how many episodes he appeared in? Oh, uh, gosh, I don't know how many they were filming. If it was a weekly show, uh, I'll say 200. Paul Lynn starred in 707 episodes of Hollywood Squares. Wow. <laughs> that is a wow. massive number. <laughs> Holy cow. That was, that'd have to be like, what, 20 years? <laughs> 15 years? years? a lot. I don't know how many they were doing in a season back then, but wow. wow. Either. That's crazy. Now, here's you an unanswered question. It may be the highlight of this show for me. Uh, I have read and seen interviews of Kiss when they talk about their love lives is not a good term. Their, their escapades, we'll say. Uh-huh. 
And many times it has been brought up about Paul Stanley bedding Florence Henderson. Do you think this is when it happened? Well, it <laughs> it would make sense. <laughs> she was looking uh, pretty good on this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know when their paths crossed beyond this, maybe several other times, but when I was watching this and I seen them on screen together, that thought hit me like, wait a minute. I've heard about this before. <laughs> maybe their trailers were next to each other outside. Might have been. <laughs> Might have been. Good for uh, Paul, though. Go get them, Paul. <laughs> I wonder how old she was around this time. When did the Brady Bunch debut? It was like 1969, right? Uh, you say it was, uh, I, think, I think that sounds right. I want to say this was the 50th anniversary this year. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, let's see here. Uh, Paul and she was born in 1934, so she would have been 42 years old when this was filmed. Mm-hmm. Unless they filmed it in 75, she may have just been 41. She was my age. Ish. <laughs> my age ish. She was my age ish. So. Well, it was it was fun. Uh definitely worth the hype. The the hype that you gave me and the hype that I've heard over the years. And to sit down and watch it and kind of dissect it was really fun. Yeah, now I don't know that it's something you would want to watch every Halloween as part of tradition, oh, but every few no. years. Every, <laughs> every few years. Yes. Though, yeah, uh, it's they, it's definitely not going in my playlist. We'll put it that way. But I, I would go back and revisit it. Well, a year later in 1977, they followed this up with "Twas the Night Before Christmas," Paul Lind special. Oh lord! So, yeah. <laughs> now I'll that's have to look one. Lineup. <laughs> I've not seen it. I haven't seen it. I think I will uh, try to scoop it out for this Christmas though, and, and give it a watch. Okay. But overall, if we were rating this one to ten, what would you give it? Uh, on pure nostalgia, like eight, you know, Mm. if you're, if you want to get just the temperature of 1976, like you were saying before, it's, it's perfect, but to, for it to be like a, if I'm ranking it as a Halloween special, it's maybe middle of the road, like four or five. You know. I will uh, concur with both of those thoughts. Yeah, that's about where I'd put it on both counts. But uh, I had forgotten all those other quotes I mentioned. None of those were my favorites. My absolute favorite, and I'm going to wrap it up on this, was uh, when they were talking about, I think it was Tim Conway in the trucker part, was talking about how he met Pinky Tuscadero, or as they called her in this skit, Kinky Pinky. She was a waitress, said she brought the plate down and says, uh, be careful, it's hot, and so am I. And I thought, man, that's going to be my new catchphrase from now <laughs> on. <laughs> I'll have to uh, splice that out and put in the intro of the podcast. That oh, yeah. Right there. <laughs> it's hot, and so am I. Yeah, you'll be hearing that a lot from me going forward. <laughs> well, that was fun, man. We'll have to... Uh... Make sure to check out uh, everybody's comments on that. Leave a comment with your thoughts. If you haven't watched it, it like I said, it's worth the watch at least once. And leave your thoughts. Come back and, uh, and leave a comment and let us know what you think. If, you, if it's one of those that you hold in high regard that you watch every year, I'd like to get your take, too, on it and see mm-hmm. how it became such a tradition. Because, you know, with it being almost out of print or even unavailable for years and years until YouTube came along, <laughs> were you able to get it on the on the black market, you know, uh, or have it recorded off a of television somewhere? I, I don't even know how you would do that if it only aired once. But right. like you said, there was somebody that was uh, selling it on the street somewhere if there was copies uh, being passed around. Well, it... Um... It had gotten lost for a long time too. Um, well, oh, shoot, like I, the original? You mean yeah, like the, the original. Gordon? The original had gotten lost, and it was lost until, gosh, twenty years, and really? it was found. Yeah, and it was found, and they decided to put it on, to release it. I don't know if it was on VHS or DVD first, but it was around that time frame when we were making the switch from VHS to DVD nationwide, and that's when it had first you know, came back into public consciousness. So it's really gained its head of steam since the late nineties. Okay. 
well, let's leave it at that, man. And um, like I said, we're anxious to hear your thoughts on it and how you think our breakdown went of it and everything. So make sure you leave us a comment over there on the show notes or you've got it in the TRN theater too. You can leave a comment there and let us know what y'all think. So uh, coming up, we're going to wrap it up real quick and get out of here. And we'll be uh, right back after this. Now inside each Wendy's Kids Meal, one of Play-Doh's Fingles Finger Puppets. You can make them yourself and watch them glow in the dark. Play-Doh Halloween Fingles. You can collect all six at Wendy's. <laughs> now when you come to Hardee's, you can buy one glow-in-the-dark Halloween hideaway for just $1.29 with every purchase of hash rounds or any dessert. There'll be a different Halloween hideaway each week, four and all. Oh, that was fast. You can only get them for a limited time, and you can't get them anywhere else but Hardee's. All right, we are back to tell you what we got coming up for Halloween this week on the Retro Network. And it includes some uh, articles coming up. We've also had some pretty good ones drop already we've been telling you about, Mick. Uh, what's been going on recently as far as the Halloween stuff? October so far has been full of fun, old, spooky, retro-themed features and podcasts and stuff in the TRN Theater. I think uh, we are probably near the top of the list this month of your one-stop destination for all old-school Halloween stuff. And that's going to continue on next week, too. We've you know, I lined us up some guest posters, some people, other folks like around the web who we're going to see a lot from them. We got some features coming up on spooky cartoon, bad guys, mm -hmm. great Halloween themed serials from through the years, Ooh. Uh, Halloween commercials from your youth and stuff. So it's a lot of, a lot of good Halloween fun to go along with what we've been having, like uh, Brandon's retro rerun reviews that he does quite frequently he's been doing all halloween episodes of old shows this month adam's 10 halloween movies for everybody in your party and tim's 10 great halloween tv specials you need to watch so we've got you covered this month on halloween and that's continuing all week long and right on up through the end of the month so stop by the retro network.com every day for the latest on your spooky fun and not just spooky fun did you see uh the piece that tim done this past week for us on when an earthquake stopped the 1989 oh, world yeah. series. Yeah. I ended up have, going right over to YouTube or using the, uh, the video embedded and watched that footage again. Cause I hadn't watched it in years. Mm -hmm. And I remember that very vividly. I was actually at my grandmother's house watching the game when that happened. And we're all like, what's going on? And yeah. Well, last Thursday was the 30th anniversary of that. So Tim put that together yeah. for us. It was a great look back at the day and the events surrounding all of that. So great job. And, and you and I, just to play off that, we touch about how much we like a lot of ESPN's 30 for 30 documentaries. That's one they done was the day the series stopped. Mm -hmm. I think was the name of it. That's a really good one for people to go check out too. Yep. Yeah, that's what we've got going on right now. And we've got uh, one more episode of Sequel Quest. Actually, a new episode coming up this week. And they're doing Shaun of the Dead, a sequel to that, a movie I have not seen, shamefully, either. So uh, that will be all new stuff to me. But they got a brand new episode coming up. Uh, the one they just dropped on the Joker review. I've got that downloaded. I'm ready to hear that this week. I still have not seen the movie yet. So I'm anxious to hear what the gang has to say. Uh, about Joker, and I'm still getting the it's disturbing yet good, <laughs> you know, vibe from everybody that I've seen that has gone to watch it. So I'm, I'm anxious to hear what they have to say about it too, to see if I'm gonna go out and catch it before, uh, before too long before it gets out of the theaters. Yeah, I'm so, gonna save that episode until after I watch the movie. I'm really excited to see the movie. Not excited enough to actually go pay money to watch it in the theater. It'll be a few months before I watch it, and then I'll listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've uh, just wanted to briefly mention, too, you know, we always tell you where to follow us, TRN Social, RDAs, and Yesterdayville. But like I said in the beginning there, just recently when I'm up to RetroCon, I was staying at my buddy Wyatt's house, and he had an Amazon Echo. And we were messing around with it. And I said, uh, hey, Alexa, play the Retro Network podcast channel. She couldn't find it. And then we finally found it's on the TuneIn app. So if you're connected with the TuneIn uh, radio app, just say 
Alexa Play, the Retro Network podcast channel on TuneIn, and boom, you've got the latest episode playing, and you can tell it to skip and just go through those. So if you've got any of that home automation, try it out if you can get it to uh, connect to TuneIn Radio, and you can find us that way. So I have not d- dove into the uh, the home automation world at all, other than I can tell Alexa to play something on my phone. We started getting into the home automation world about 15 years ago, but really here only in the last four or five has it really paid off because our kids are old enough now that they can go get stuff for you. You know, we, we started having them 15 years ago, but now they're only to the age where you can have them go get you a cold drink and stuff. So we're, we're still working on the automation though with the rest of the things. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, we're going to sign off for now. You can find me this week over there. On Retro Days for the Halloween special, I'm, I'm planning to just pull up a chair and watch that uh, live. And then, you know, you can check it out on YouTube like Mick's going to do uh, later on. But you can find me there this week. And make sure you check out all the Halloween content we got coming up, man. We're almost there. Can't wait for the big day. We got some fun plans here, trick-or-treating and going to the fall festival here around the corner. Uh, actually, I'm going to do a trunk-or-treat this year. I've oh, wow. got a, I've got a big, we do, uh, we've got lots of cardboard laying around at work and I made a huge pumpkin, cut out the, the eyes and the mouth for the jack-o'-lantern. And I've got these ping pong balls that are eyeballs that they're going to have the kids th- try to throw through the jack-o'-lantern eyes and mouth. So hmm. I can't wait to do that. It's going to be fun. But, uh, hope everybody enjoyed our special Halloween party edition of the retro network podcast. And, uh, we will see you very soon. Didn't know if you wanted to say goodbye or not. Oh, hey, yeah, see y'all. <laughs>Thanks for listening to the Retro Network Podcast channel. Make sure you listen to all of the great podcasts we have to offer right here in this feed. If you enjoy our channel, please give us a five-star rating in your favorite podcast app. Connect with us on social media by following TRN Social and visit the RetroNetwork.com website for your daily retro fix. Come back next week for another episode of the Retro Network Podcast.